Hello and welcome to this Tuts Plus series, Tumblr Theming 101. In this video, we're going to go about creating our main element and to start creating the markup for our posts. As you remember from the previous video, we coded the markup for our sidebar or a side element, which you can see here. So we've done the sidebar element apart from the Twitter feed, which we'll handle later. And now we're going to start looking at the main element. So as we mentioned, the main element is going to house our posts as well as our pagination and our footer. So I'm going to first start off by creating this main element. Thank you for completion. Again, if you feel that you want to use a div or a different element, you feel free. Uh, again, this isn't about how to code HTML5 or anything like that. This is more about the Tumblr theme operators. So that's my main element. Now inside my main element, I would like to have all of my posts. Now the Tumblr documentation actually states that, well, it, it's odd. Um, I'm not too sure if it's because of how Tumblr started, etc. But they suggest using an ordered list and then list items. Now I kind of see why they may have may have gone that way. Uh, however, I don't really feel the need to use these two elements uh, purely because of their meaning. It's a list of posts which makes sense. And it's an ordered list because it's in a, some sort of chronological or reverse chronological order. So that makes sense. But I like to see my posts more like an article because of the per, the way the permalink page works. When you visit the full post, you would literally have on when you visit the permalink page, which would be the post on its own, your content would then be an ordered list with one list item. And that doesn't really make much sense. I just like to think of each of the posts as an article. So I am going to use slides, the article element. Now, if we go back to the documentation and go back to the post variables, as you've seen in the previous video, the block called posts will return each of our posts. So that is the first thing I need to include inside my main element. So what I'm telling the theme is that inside my main element, for each of my posts, do something in here. Now, if I go back to the design, I straight away notice that there is content that is consistent on each of the posts, and they are the post details. So I'll just uh, give us a bit more room here. So as you can see, each of the posts has the same details or the same footer, so to speak. So we have a like button, we have a reblog button, we have the tags for this particular post, we have the time ago it was posted, and then we have how many notes, which is how many likes or reblogs that this post has gotten um, by Tumblr. And again, same setup, same setup and so on and so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to code the bottom part of the post first. Now, there are two ways of going about this and there are um, there's an instant downside to the first way. The first way would be to include a footer inside each of the post type blocks. So let's just get a demo going. Or an example going. So here we're going to code in our post type. Now remember, post type will return the name of the current post type. So if we take all this and put it into here and click edit, update preview. Okay. So as mentioned, the theme preview has seven example posts, the six post types, and then the two text posts at the end. So we've got quote, photo, link, chat, audio, text, and text. Now, if we were to go about and 
code this on the basis that we're going to create a block for each of our post type. So we'll do block text, just like we did in the uh, first few videos. We could go about this one or two ways. And the first way we could go about it is we could create a footer element inside this block text, and then we'd have to do that for every single one. So block text, blocks photo, block panorama, block photo set, quote, etc, etc. Now the problem I have with that is you'll end up with maybe eight different footers, or no, sorry, eight of the same footers being repeated. Now I like to try and keep the theme code as dry as possible um, in terms of markup. Now sometimes it isn't possible to keep dry as in terms of the theme operators, like a lot of the time, which you'll see later on in the video, we use the permalink and date hack um, to make sure we're not displaying content on specific pages. But as in, but in terms of markup and in terms of ease of use, the footer I would imagine to be coded once and then reused for each of the posts. Now to do this, and as you've seen before you would literally take the variable and make sure that it isn't inside any of the post type logic. Now if we take this example, sorry, I'll take that example and just put it into the uh, theme editor. Okay, so as you can see now, because our post type is inside the block text or the black, the block text post type, we only ever get text and text back because it's guarded. Because our theme is currently saying, inside our block posts, return all our posts, and if this post happens to be a text post, then return the post type. Whereas if we move it out, and then take that and put it in, we will see we are getting a post type back for all of our posts. And what we're essentially saying is here is, for our posts, for each one of them, print the post type, and then if it is a text post, do something here. So you can be specific when you are creating your logic for your um, blocks and variables, but also use it to your advantage. Use that um, that loop to your you know to actually only write the footer or the detail content once. That way, if you decide that you want to do an update or you want to remove something or you want to include some sort of customization option, you're only actually having to include it in one place rather than six. So if we go back to the design, again, as I mentioned, I'm going to work on the posts. I'm going to work on the post footer. Now, I'm going to use an article, or the article element even, not an article, <laughs> the article element or the article element as I'm now renaming things. So, again to clarify, what I'm essentially saying here is, inside my main element, return each of my posts. For each of my posts, I would like the markup to be article. And then inside the article, I'm going to include the post type. Uh, copy that and I'm going to paste it into the editor. Um, you, it's surprising how quick I can copy and paste into this editor now. So as you can see, we've got our post types and if I can get Firebug to look inside the iframe, there we go, that's perfect. So we have our main element. I'll just get that up there so we can get side by side. So we have our... Bye bye. So we have our main element, like our theme code. And then we said for each of our posts, we would like to have an article element. I mean, an, an, yeah, an article element, and then the post type inside. And that is what we've got back. Again, it's worth mentioning on the um, aside as well, whilst we're here. Um, it was a pretty good demonstration that. So as you can see, we have our aside, we have our image, we have our H1, which has uh, now got the, type, the blog title in it. We have our H5, which has now got the about title in. We've got our paragraph with a description about the blog itself. 
and then our aside finishes. And then our main element starts. Then we've looped through all of our posts, and for each post we have returned a article element. Um, and inside that article element is returned the post type as a string. So that is the basics of creating um, our posts in the main element. Now, as mentioned, I would like to work on the footer and make it a single element that Tumblr then returns several times. So what I need to do is I need to go to documentation and the first thing in that footer, which I'll code in now. Again, if you don't agree on footer, use whatever div, details, etc., etc. And again, because this is inside um, an element, I'm going to use indentation. So I'll go back to the documentation and I'm going to include the like and the reblog buttons that are on the design. And there is a section for this, like and reblogs. Okay, so the variable for the like button is surprisingly called like button. So, and the, oops, close it there. And the variable for the reblog button is surprisingly called reblog button. Again, Tumblr did a great job of actually naming these sensibly. So that is the like button and the reblog button included. Now let's just take that and put that straight in. So as you can see now, we have a like and a reblog button for each of our posts. Now you can um, customize these a little bit further. So you can set the color. Now, by default, I believe they are gray, uh, but you can change these to gray, white, or black. Now, a tip here is you can't actually style them any further than the color option here and the size option here. You can alter the size um, with CSS, but you can't alter the color. And the reason for this is that the light buttons and the reblog buttons use iframes. Um, if I remember correctly, I'm 100% sure the like button uses an iframe, um, but this would actually be my first time using the reblog button. Um, so, if we just have a look at the actual markup, so yeah, as you can see, this is our main element. And these are our articles and each side the article is a footer and then inside that footer is a like button which is an iframe and then there is a reblog button which actually isn't a iframe um, it's an svg so you could possibly use css to fill that um, but i would stick to using the tumblr variable and customization options Again, this probably is another tip that I probably need to repeat later on, but work with the Tumblr theme operators, not against. I made a few mistakes very early on with themes I created, trying to work against what I was given by Tumblr's um, theme operators, and it came back to bite me pretty bad. So my advice is try and do as much as possible for your theme with the theme operators, the variables and the blocks. Um, and again, if there's ever any anything you want to do, check the, the theme documentation first and see if there's something that Tumblr can give you to help you do that. Um, one point is that you can actually get image widths and heights for every single image Tumblr has saved. So when, as I mentioned before, when you upload an image to Tumblr, it will take that image and it'll process that image. that will create a copy of that image at various different sizes. It will also provide you with variables to actually get the width and height information for each of them sizes, which is handy um, as I've utilized it in one of my image replacement scripts. Uh, and I've actually utilized it in a photo um, set grid replacement thing where I'm actually able to draw the grid without having the image information because Tumblr has provided me with the image information, if that makes sense. So rather than waiting for the image to download, Tumblr has given it me. So always check the documentation before you work on something to double check Tumblr is actually giving you this information already. Now, 
the final part of this video will be to get in the post details. So we've already got in the reblog, the like and the reblog buttons. And now the final part would be to get the time, the notes, and then the tags. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a list, um, an, order, an unordered list item for this element. And then I'm going to create an ally and then go to the documentation. Now the first one in the uh, post details is the date. So we go to date. And the first thing we see is block date. Now there are a wide variety, um, a wide range even, of variables and blocks related to date. Now, the one we're going to concentrate on here is time ago, because that matches the theme design. However, they provide you a variable for pretty much every single possible part um, of a date you could possibly need. So for example, you can have day of the month, you can have day of the month with zero, you can have day of the week, you can have short day of the week, you can have the day of the month suffix, so the first and, 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 and <laughs> you can have the day of the year, the week of the year, the month, etc. As I get said, Tumblr will provide you with pretty much any information you need. But we're going to take the uh, time ago, which will be a contextual, contextual time. So in here, we're going to just put time ago. Now for safety, we're just going to return the block date. We're not going to return the block date. We're going to use the block date and wrap that li in it. Now the reason we use block date is um, to make sure there is a date the pages, I believe, do not have a date. Don't I'm ninety nine percent certain on that, and I will double check it for the next video. But I believe that pages do not have a date, so you would have an empty um, li. So we'll wrap that in the date. So we go back to the design, and the next part is the notes or the note count. Now, notes aren't just likes; they're also reblogs. So it's a mixed figure. Um, and if we go up to the documentation and find the section on likes, no. Um, if I remember correctly, this is in a really weird place. There we go. No, it's nope. It's not. I apologise. It's my fault. So, what we want here is there are a few variables. Now, some of these relate to the permanent page. Example, the post notes relates to the permalink page only and will not be displayed on the index page. So we ignore that and we're just going to skip down to what we actually need for the index, which is the note count. So again, safeguard. And again, another um, ally. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. Now, for sanity's sake, we're probably best um, including an anchor for each of these details. Now, if I just include an anchor here, and we're going to use the time ago variable as the actual text for the anchor, and then we're going to and we're going to leave the link for the time being. The reason is you could actually link to two possible places. You could link to either the permalink page, which would be um, the, just the post on its own, or you could actually link to all posts with a, get the same date. So we'll say there was four posts published on a Monday, two on a Tuesday, and this post happened to be published on a Monday. You could actually link to um, a search result that will return all the posts for a specific day. So for the time being, I'm just going to leave that and we'll work out that mechanic later on. 
again, it's a design decision. If you want your um, time to link to the permalink page, then make it link to, link to the permalink page, um, and we'll go through that later on. So again, for the note count, I'm going to include another anchor, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the note count with label variable. Okay, so what we are saying here is if there are um, if there is a note count, so if there has a value that's more than zero, then return an li with an anchor and a note count with label. Now, Tumblr sadly will not return a note count of zero. So there would not be a note count here if nobody had actually liked or reblogged this particular post. However, we do have a rather nice CSS fix for this, which we will look at later on in the series. Um, and again, it's another example of utilizing what Tumblr gives you. Um, when I first started creating themes, when I had no note count, I was using JavaScript to go through and fill in the zeros. However, um, there is a nice CSS solution to actually fill this missing data in, which I'll uh, go through later on. So that's our note count and that's our date. Now, the final item, um, I believe, are tags. Yep, tags. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for the section related to tags. There's our tags. Okay, so again, there's another block as a condition. So has tags. So similar to has pages, if this post has tags, do something. There we go, has tags. And then what we're going to do um, is we're going to include the name of the tag inside our anchor. Actually, no, we're not. We need to uh, actually, I need to work on some logic first. So, what we can do, like we did with the pages, is we can return something specific for each of the tags. Now, rather than doing an LIA, and an ally and an anchor for each of the tags. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually include a load of anchors inside the li element. This way I can allow the li to control the content inside. So we'll do here block tags and then we'll close the block tags. So what we're essentially saying is if this post has tags, create an li, uh, print a li um, element, and then for each of them tags, I would like you to print an anchor element. Now, this anchor element is also going to include what they call the tag variable, which is the name of this tag. So, from the design, it would be New York City Times Square. So. It's actually worth mentioning that this is a bad representation of tags. Um, no, I told you that's actually all right. Tags themselves, when returned as a URL, will actually the spaces will be prefixed with an underscore because spaces in URLs are yeah. So. We will then return the tag URL as the h reference or the href. So tag URL. Again, as you'll see, there is quite a few consistent things. So if it's a URL, it's all capital letters, um, and it's usually the end part of the tag name. So that I believe is the footer markup created. So what we'll do. Just do um, do nothing. Take it. Copy it all. 
I was about to say the browser. Okay, so there we go. Um, I know it's not much to look at, at the moment, but as I said, I find it a lot easier to be able to create all the markup first, and then once we've got all our markup, we can actually look at the live site and start styling that with CSS rather than having to um, copy and paste all the time. So as you can see here, like our theme, so like our theme here, we have the date. I don't believe notes show on the theme preview. Um, but what I'll do is I'll just double check. No, I can't double check that. Um, so we have our date and then we have our tags. And I'll just check the, the logic. Yep, that should be fine. That should be fine. So that is the footer for our post. Now, the good thing here is that we've written the markup once, but Tumblr, because of the way the blocks work and the logic works, has returned it more than once. So as you can see here now, each of our articles has a footer. So that's what I'm saying about using the blocks to your advantage. Don't over don't overcomplicate. Yes, you're going to have to use the specific block um, post types like block text, block photo, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But if you can be counterintuitive, you know, include your footer once, so you only have to edit it once in the theme, and let Tumblr do the legwork of repeating it for you. Um, and I think that's pretty much it for this video. I do hope you enjoyed it. In the next video, we'll be looking at creating the markup for the content related to the photo post type and possibly the text post type. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one.